Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Matthew Swift, Concordia co-founder and CEO, and Parker Harris, co-founder and global chief technology officer at Salesforce. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody is having a good day. It's obviously a very big news day in the, in the country today with the confirmation of our newest Supreme Court Justice. I was hearing a little bit about that just now. Um, so I, I am so excited today uh, to be joined by Parker Harris, uh, the co-founder and global chief technology officer of Salesforce, a company that we all know so well within the Concordia community, but also Salesforce has, has just become known all around the world. But uh, so Parker, first off, thank you and welcome uh, to the 2022 Concordia Lexington Summit. Matthew, thanks for having me. I, I apologize, I'm not there in person, but thank you for letting me beam in virtually. No, of course, of course. So Parker, we talked this morning with a group of students from the University of Kentucky, which is our main programming partner here in Lexington. And we talked to them a lot about their optimism and their pessimism, how they feel about the public sector and the private sector. And there was a feeling among these students of skepticism of the private sector and what the role of businesses mm -hmm. in society today with the role of businesses in, in America today. But when I read a lot about what you have been working on and what Salesforce talks about, all of the messaging is centered around business being this driver of a force for good. But it seems like you've got an awfully skeptical audience to that effect. So what is it that you are trying to do in your leadership role at Salesforce uh, to drive or, or spread the word that business is a force good, and how does that play out? Yeah, well, you know, I, I was lucky enough 23 years ago to meet Mark Benioff, and when I met him and we started Salesforce, we started with what we call the, the 111 model, um, which is basically as we built uh, Salesforce, when we started it, we put 1% of our time, 1% of our equity, and 1% of our product uh, we give away for free every year. And that has kind of cemented in our culture as we've grown that not only are we focused, you know, in a capitalistic way on building a strong company with a lot of revenue, um, you know, we'll be, uh, you know, at 30 plus billion in revenue this fiscal year, but also that we can do good wherever our employees are. So really focused where we have um, in our employees and and also what they want to focus on they get nine days off a year so you know what i I'll focus on is you know is salesforce and and our employees and our company and how can we leverage that you know one percent of our equity one percent of our uh time uh which is a lot of time now with seventy thousand employees and one percent of our pro products you know that we give away for free to nonprofits all over the world to do good and you know, if uh, I hope those students in uh, in Lexington um, hear about us, um, you know, and maybe uh, sessions like this are a way to broadcast our leadership. We certainly do a lot of events and a lot of marketing around the world, but um, you know, I'm, I'm more concerned with what we're doing than the actual marketing of it. So, so Parker, how talk a little bit about yeah. how Salesforce has changed since the pandemic, since COVID in terms of, of what your role is in connecting people? Because it seems like there's a lot of uncertainty on how we are going to be connected going forward. Even at Concordia, we struggle with this. Are we hybrid? Are we in person? Thank God, uh, a majority <laughs> of people are here in person today, but how do we stay better connected and what has changed at Salesforce over the last two years? Yeah. Um you know, it, it certainly, you know, Salesforce, like many companies in, in 2020, when, uh, when everybody went home, uh, you know, we unfortunately kind of froze a little bit, like, whoa, what, you know, what, what are we doing and how are we going to operate? Um, but we kind of quickly shook ourselves out of that and, um, and kind of went all completely online. Um, thankfully for our business, um, it was fairly easy to do that. You know, we're a technology company, so, uh, you know, we're used to doing meetings online. Um, and so switching that in-person meeting culture and, uh, and working together in person to completely online 
and selling online, for, frankly, and uh, building technology, you know, and collaborating online, that all worked extremely well. But as you said, you know, we're, we're now entering um, this new world where it's hybrid. So even this conference, uh, you know, it's great to speak to the people that are in person there with you, Matthew, but I understand that there are other people that are online mm -hmm. uh, just yep. as I am. Yeah. And, uh, and we have not learned yet how best to deal with this hybrid world, which is, um, you know, we were never good at it before the pandemic, but, uh, you know, because it was, you know, Salesforce would have meetings where very focused, uh, unfortunately, you know, a lot of our employees are in San Francisco. So we would have meetings in San Francisco and people would beam in from Paris, France or Tel Aviv, Israel, or, you know, Tokyo, Japan. We would operate as if, you know, everyone's in California and everyone speaks English and, you know, everyone's uh, awake at the same time. I think where we're headed is number one, when we have meetings now, um, if there are people in person, we have them all open their laptops and basically operate as if they're online so that, you know, you can see my image right here now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would like to see everyone in the meeting there. You know, it would be lovely if I could see some of the faces in the audience a little bit more directly um, from my experience. So when we're having meetings, we, we have them where everyone's trying to give that flat feeling of the world, but also, um, we're experimenting with uh, asynchronous work um, that maybe this concept of shifting from in-person meeting culture to online meeting culture to hybrid meeting culture, assuming that everyone's getting together all the time, maybe that's not the future. Uh, we're leveraging technology like Slack, our largest acquisition to date uh, that we acquired uh, just over a year ago to do things like let's time shift and you know i'll send you messages in slack i'll record a video message to you which is you know a high content value uh instead of being in person in a you know or online in a meeting i'll record that mm -hmm. um and uh, and and we'll have asynchronous work so when that person in tel aviv wakes up and i'm asleep uh, they can pick up the work and work with me and you know i don't have to ask that we're 100 percent together now, that being said, Matthew, we also recognize we have to get together. We have to see each other. You know, um, the, the in-person connection is so important and, uh, you know, and people forget it's very easy. I'm in my home right now. It's very easy for me to stay here in my home, uh, but uh, we need to see each other. We need to get together, but we have to have reasons to get together. Um, teams have to agree, this is how we're going to work together. This is when we're going to see each other. It's not just, hey, you have to be in the office. Salesforce is never going to say everyone has to come back to work. That is not the future. Um, the future is how do you want to work together, you know, in person, online, hybrid, asynchronous. And teams need to, you know, smaller working groups need to agree how do they want to operate. But as the chief technology officer, I've got to assume you always come from the place that technology can be purely, or not purely, but can be a driver of positive impact and positive change. But talk for a minute about what, what are some of your concerns? What are some of your, your fears about technology in terms of replacing that human to human connection or what it means from a society perspective or advancing important causes? Well, just in terms of, you know, the past two years, you know, I think we've all experienced a lot of burnout in companies. We have experienced um, mental health issues. And I think a lot of that is because uh, people have lost that connection. Uh, they have um, taken that in-person meeting culture, put it online. And yet, you know, we're doing, you know, changing the channel, click, click, click between, um, you know, uh, different Zooms or Hangouts or whatever technology you're using, and and people are 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 burning out. So one thing Salesforce is focused heavily on is just the mental health and well-being of our employees, and you know having online courses, for lack of a better form, to you know talk about meditation and healthy eating habits and just all the important things that um, you know uh, I think are even more important today, and you know. 
the ease of this technology, yes, you know, how, how can technology maybe be an issue? The ease of this technology makes it super easy to have these online meetings, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, the, the flip side is people aren't uh, having enough breaks. They are, are not going outside, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes it's okay to pick up your phone and do a phone call as you're walking somewhere. Um, you know, and I think that innovation needs to come forward to help us. And, uh, and that's also why, you know, I talked a little bit about asynchronous work. Maybe that's uh, an outlet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and frankly, there are other forms, you know, we've listened to our employees and our customers during this pandemic. Um, early on, you know, it was about you know, you know, how to be safe at home. We're now focused on how do you get back to work safely? Um, the pandemic is not over. It's, I think, hopefully it's an endemic. Mm -hmm. um, COVID will come and go. Uh, right now, we seem to have a BA2 spike. Um, and so Salesforce has technology that we've developed, um, which is now called Safety Cloud, is how do you get back together safely if you choose to have a protocol of COVID testing, for example, mm -hmm. or you know, you know, respecting employee and, and citizens' privacy, understanding if people are vaccinated or not, you know, and and forming, you know, we did a 5,000 person meeting in New York City all employees, we normally would do it with 500 to kick off our year because we wanted to get people back in person. But we did that safely. We had at home Q tests, which is this amazing, um, actually I have one right here, I'll show you. If you don't have it, it's pretty awesome. It's like the iPhone for, um, oh, you can't see it. Anyway, it's like the <laughs> iPhone for sort COVID of. testing. You, you do a test at home. We did them in our hotel rooms. It uh -huh. uploaded to the Q Cloud sync to Salesforce. Everybody got a QR code. And we knew that every single employee coming into the event was uh, COVID free, at least for that day. Yeah. So 5,000 people. And, uh, you know, we did that all very, very safely inside of a bubble. So, uh, one of the overarching themes of this summit is looking at the ever growing socioeconomic divide in the United States. And I know um, I, I've, I've got from some of the things I was reading a little bit about what you're doing with smart tech for nonprofits. Can you talk a little bit about that and what you see as a differing factor between the role of the, the for-profit community versus the role of the nonprofit community? What, what, what you, where you see that going in terms of cooperation to help bridge that divide? Yeah. Well, you know, I spoke about that one, one, one model and when, how we found in the company. I, I think it's been integral to our culture uh, in terms of, you know, a company as it's growing, integrating philanthropy into how it grows. And actually that that integrated um, philanthropic model actually helps fuel growth because um, it creates, a, you know, an incredible culture. It attracts customers. It creates better, better partnerships. And the nonprofits out there need our help. Um, they need, you know, and it's not only Salesforce can certainly, we've given a lot of money away. Uh, you know, nonprofits are using our products, as I said, whether it's for fundraising, which they're often, you know, they're doing most of the time. Um, or, we, we, you know, we use Salesforce. Hey, We're on Salesforce. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Yeah, and, and let me know if you need any help with it. But, um, but it's not just, hey, here's Salesforce, here's the product, but you know, 70,000 people, uh, nine days off a year, mm -hmm. can go and help you as a nonprofit. They can go and say, you know, hey, is there something I can do? Whether it's with Salesforce yeah. uh, implementations and that kind of support, or, you know, uh, we think education is super important. You talk about the disparity out there. You know, how do we, you know, work on our educational system? So what we do is we call it adopt your local school go out your door and go find your local public school, knock on their door and say, hey, how can I help? What can I do to help you? And so that's what our employees do. You know, um, I, I adopted a, a local school here in San Francisco, um, Cobb Elementary School. Um, it's amazing uh, what the impact that we have had. Uh, and, you know, and then I can bring in because of Salesforce's model, not just those employees, but uh, we've put money into the local um, education system here in San Francisco and Oakland. Uh, our employees are given time and we've even find ways to uh, leverage our, our service. And so I encourage all companies, not just Salesforce, to join us and 
partnering with nonprofits out there and how can your employees and how can your services and your products help them do better in the world. And you'll find that it will come back to you and it will fuel your own growth. You know, Salesforce talks about values uh, driving value. Um, that you know, if you lead a company through values, that's how we started the company, you'll create more value uh, in your stakeholders. And I think that you know, integrated philanthropy is a key piece of that. Do you, what, do you, what do you see as, for a company is at the stage where Salesforce is today, what, what do you see in the next decade for Salesforce? <laughs> that's, a, that's a big question. Well, you know, I, I obviously see um, you know, a lot of growth and impact. Um, one of the things that we are very focused on, I talked about our values, we, you know, they've always been, number one is trust. So, you know, maintaining the trust of all of our stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Number two is then ensuring that every one of our customers is successful, so customer success. Number three is innovation, uh, near and dear to my heart that we continue to innovate. Uh, but then uh, next is equality, you know, that we believe that everyone, uh, regardless of sexual orientation or, or um, racial background, uh, that, uh, you know, that they are treated equally. Uh, and then uh, finally, this fifth value uh, was added this year, um, and that's around sustainability. And so when I think about um, Salesforce's next chapter, um, one of the biggest things that's new in our next chapter is we're, we're really leaning in hard and how can we, uh, as a corporation, uh, influence, uh, support, and drive uh, positive change towards the decarbonization, um, you know, the recarbonization, decarbonization of our, our planet. Mm -hmm. um, we are doing things like sponsoring, uh, which we started at Davos two years ago, the planting of a trillion trees, the trillion tree initiative. We can't do that alone. We are about 50 million trees into our 150 million commitment. We've got uh, nations around the world signing up to join us to do that. If we can get uh, a trillion trees replanted because they've been deforested, we can remove a lot of carbon from the atmosphere. Uh, we're working on product. We have uh, a new product called Net Zero Cloud, which mm -hmm. helps corporations um, track their uh, emissions, uh, manage their carbon credits, um, you know, so it's pretty incredible. And then we even recently hosted at Salesforce Tower in San Francisco, a bunch of um, venture capitalists who are looking to invest along with Salesforce in new startups that are trying to innovate how to have a positive effect uh, on this uh, looming problem that is, you know, getting worse that's going to cause a lot of issues for nations, uh, but it's going to cause a lot of issues for uh, companies and individuals as well. Do you see through through your career? Have you do you see, especially over the last 10, 20 years, a significant difference in terms of how you as a business leader are driving public policy issues? I mean, you're a tech company. You're talking about planting trees. I mean, are you it, what you? It seems like there's been this enormous shift. Is this something that is here to stay? Or, or do you see this as a bit of a fad? Well, I, you know, I, th I think it's just reflective of Klaus Schultz from the World Economic Forum, his vision of stakeholder capitalism, which uh, we believe strongly in, um, that um, businesses, you know, the business of business is making the world a better place and that, you know, business can be a force for positive change. You know, you need to drive that through your values. You need to drive it through your stakeholders. Um, you know, I think businesses are not, um, they're not governments. We're not democracies. Uh, and, and so, you know, we need to work with governments and not, uh, you know, and, and partner with governments. So certainly there, you know, there's lobbying efforts, but also, you know, how can we influence change at the grassroots level uh, through our employee base, through our volunteering, through our donations uh, and, you know, and our presence on the world stage, you know, Salesforce, thankfully, I'm so grateful to be part of it, ha is a large company now. And so we can go to places like the World Economic Forum and meet with other world leaders and other CEOs and try to get them to work with us on having a greater impact on important initiatives like climate change. Parker, you always got to say at the World Economic Forum and also at Concordia. 
And at Concordia, yes. Exactly. I'm sorry. I should, I should not. I should not be talking about the World Economic. No, no, it's I okay. Apologize. It's all right. That's right. He, he, he set the model. He set the standard. Yeah. Um, you know what, Matthew? I just need to get to know you even better. That's and right. So that's this right. is a great start, uh, and I just love being here. But so, uh, yes. Working with Concordia and bringing more <laughs> CEOs with us to work with you. But la last question, though, and and at a time when we have what's ha taking place in Ukraine, you see political division, you see the way news is covered. I mean, everything today seems to really touch on this. How are we divided versus how are we united? Is, is, seems to be the consistent theme. Your your the way that you are talking about. Salesforce as a company and the way you lead it is, is quite different, but is there any change that you see to this global approach to ESG given everything that's happening and changing geopolitically so quickly in the world? No, I think, I think it's even more important, um, you know. Um, I mean, you, you look at the, um, you know, talk about climate change, you look at the demand for oil um, and you look at, you know, with, with what's going on right now, and, and the difficulty of you know, countries like Germany to wean themselves off of oil from mm -hmm. Russia and that, how much they depend on it. And you know, I'm, I'm an optimist, so maybe this will help accelerate the move to greener sources uh, that, you know, um, you know, but uh, Europe needs help. So the United States needs to be involved and somehow make sure that they're supporting Europe you mm -hmm. know, through that transition. Uh, it's just gonna be harder for them than uh, than the United States. So I think it's even more important. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there may be difficulties and partnerships uh, in, in the world. With you know, the world seems to be coming less of one world right now, and yeah. I hope hope not. But it seems to be headed a little bit more towards breaking a little bit into two pieces. Um, you know, with China and Russia on one side and and maybe other nations and then the West on the other, but ho hopefully we won't end up there. But if it does, we still need to find ways through diplomacy to work together because, you know, it's still one world. The ESGs uh, remain super important. And, you know, I just think it's important that people take action. Um, you know, when the, when the pandemic hit, mm -hmm. Salesforce, I don't, couldn't believe it, but, you know, we focused on how can we get PPE uh, to New York, uh, to San Francisco, to Chicago, and you know, even later to India. You know, when the war hit in Ukraine, you know, how can we help as an organization and from a humanitarian perspective? And so, um, you know, we need to work with governments in terms of politics, but I think we can all operate with the humanitarian view as corporations and, and make sure we're leaning in. It's a good note to end on. Parker Harris, co-founder and global chief technology officer of Salesforce. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I hope to see you soon. Matthew, thank you for having me. Thanks all. Thank you.